Good morning. Welcome to November. <laughs> Can you believe it's November already? And uh, it is, uh, of course, All Saints Day, and we celebrate this. It is also welcome to Eastern Standard Time. Um, some people are probably still looking at watches that say it's 1130 uh, when it is 1030. So uh, we are glad that you're here this morning. A couple of announcements. Uh, did you have a good birthday, Katie? Yeah. Good, good, good. Um, birthdays this week, Corky Carter and Collier Guess are celebrating birthdays this week. Um, Tuesday is an important day. Please, no matter what you're doing, if you haven't already, make sure you take the time to vote. Very, very important that we vote, especially this year during a presidential election. And that is all I'll say about that. Um, I, I need your help a little bit uh, with our ever-growing St. Andrew's prayer list. Um, I'm trying to go over it, and uh, if you see a name that you have submitted and asked for prayer that no longer needs prayer, either by healing or that they've gone home to be with the Lord, please let me know so that I can shorten the list. Uh, but I would appreciate that. Um, couple of things about this guy over here, Deacon Bob. First of all, thank you so much for the blessing that you've done on the walkway out here. Um, I caught him the other day scrubbing the walkway and uh, pressure washing it. Uh, it looks magnificent. Thank you for your service. It's just wonderful. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance, those of you that have Facebook and may have seen the uh, article in the Coffee uh, County Food Bank, that uh, Deacon Bob has been recognized. Of course, they call him Mr. Bob because uh, they're of the Baptist persuasion, so that's okay. They, they, at least they got the, last, the first name right, right? Um, and I took that article and shared it from St. Andrews and said, look at Deacon Bob hard at work. What an amazing job. Um, he has been recognized for his excellent dedication and service on behalf of St. Andrew's Deacon Bob, we thank you so very much. And of course, uh, the food bank and all of the people that you serve and pray with um, are very, very blessed. So uh, I've placed in your, um, your parish life a listing of things because Deacon Bob has put the box back out there for collection. And this Sunday and next Sunday, we'll be uh, asking you to please uh, put some of the things, macaroni and cheese, spaghetti noodles, you can see the list here. Um, also, if you'd like to make a monetary donation, just make it out to St. Andrews and put it in the memo line, Coffee County Food Bank. Vestry members who were unable to attend the vestry meeting, uh, please, your packets are on the round table in the church office, please uh, come and take it after the service. And our next vestry meeting is Monday night, November 16th at 6.30 p.m. Um, on another note, uh, this coming Friday and Saturday is our diocesan synod. Now, due to COVID, we are not going to be meeting in Tallahassee in person. Uh, it is going to be on Zoom. And so um, the diocesan uh, the clergy and our delegate who is uh, our our delegate for for the of the lay contingency uh filling in for andrew our, our senior warden is don campbell and uh, so deacon bob and deacon diane and myself will be online uh with that on uh friday night and saturday um keep us in prayer if you would deacon bob has been nominated uh for the diocesan council now, that's a blessing. I served on that for three years, and uh, he'll be excellent. We pray that he gets elected. And keep me in mind, too, I've been nominated for the Standing Committee and also for the Ecclesiastical Court. Uh, I would appreciate your prayers for that. Um, again, this is All Saints Day, and so fittingly, our opening hymn is hymn 287 in the Red Hymnal. Please stand. It is for all the saints. We're 
only singing his, uh, verses 1 through 4. I would note that our acclamation is not the normal one. Uh, you'll see it in the bulletin. It's also on page 146. Worthy is the Lord our God to receive glory and honor and power. Please join me, if you would, on page 124 of the prayer book as we pray together the collect for purity, kneeling if you're able. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father, Oh, Lord. 
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated now for the readings. A reading from the book of Revelation. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me with Psalm 149, prayed responsibly by half verse. Praise the Lord. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Let Israel rejoice in the one who made him. Let them praise his name in the dance. For the Lord has pleasure in his people. Let the faithful be joyful with glory. Let the praises of God be in their mouth. To inflict vengeance on the nations. And to rebuke the people. To bind their kings in chains. And their nobles in iron. That they may execute judgment upon them as it is written. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have stopped 
I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, I stand before you, Father Klutz. I'm sorry, Deacon Bob. Uh, we are so blessed this morning to stand together with all the saints in glory who proclaim the truth that you are our God, your Son is our King, and your Holy Spirit lives within us. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. When you hear the word saint, what do you think of? I think it really all depends on where you come from. People with a Roman Catholic background think of people who have been elevated to a level called canonization, giving them a special place in the church. Other Christian denominations look at saints as faithful believers that are deceased. I would like to suggest to you that I believe saints go far beyond all of that. And to be a believer in Jesus Christ as Lord and the Son of God is a saint. Look around you today. We are surrounded by saints. Now you're probably saying to yourself, nah, I'm not a saint. Yeah, you are. You also are a sinner. But you know who to go to when you feel burdened by sin. You go before the Lord and you ask for forgiveness. And because you know his son, he gives you the forgiveness that his son earned for you. In our first reading that Beverly read this morning from the book of Revelation, the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ to the apostle John, John is given a vision of saints in heaven, in God's throne room, worshiping and serving him all day and night with great, abundant, and exuberant joy. This vision is what John sees in verse 9 of chapter 7 of today's, of today's reading. After having heard the list of 144,000 in verses 4 to 8, he sees a huge crowd of people which nobody could ever count. So when you hear the word 144,000, don't worry about the numbers. It's a huge number. It's more than anyone could ever count, and it keeps growing. Along with this huge crowd of people, John also saw four living creatures, the elders and the angels. His description of the throne in the center and the expanding circle of those who are praising God is, in my estimation, absolutely awesome. John says that all these saints are from all over the earth from every tribe and nation. Let me stop right here, okay? Tribe meaning Jews. Nation meaning Gentiles. They're all there. And language. It's important to know, again, the word nation throughout Scripture refers to the Gentiles. That means you have a place in heaven. If you know and love Jesus, you are a saint. Yes, even in the pew of St. Andrews. This sea of saints, if you call it, they're wearing white robes and are holding palm branches in their hands. Now, white robes are a sign of purity and of Christ's righteousness and holiness. The palm branches, a sign of victory and royalty. The king of kings 
recalling his triumphant entry into the earthly Jerusalem on the Sunday before he was crucified. Now, in verse 10, the word salvation. Salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne. Salvation means to be rescued or saved. Isn't that the truth? Jesus' death on the cross rescues us from ourselves and our sins. They're continually praising and worshiping, recognizing with joy that everything good, noble, and powerful, and wise can only come from God himself. It is the uninhibited shout of praise to God from whom all blessings flow. Now John, on the island of Patmos, during this vision, is transported to this heavenly throne room. This is not just any throne room. It's God's holy temple, the heavenly temple, the perfect counterpart to the one in Jerusalem. I find it absolutely amazing that John is not simply looking on from a great distance as a fly on the wall, but he's right in the midst of everything with the four living creatures and the 24 elders. And one of those elders speaks to John, asking him the questions which we all want to know the answer to. Who are these people? Where do they come from? And this elder himself supplies the answer. They are the ones who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That's Revelation 7, 14. This is the answer that the church desperately needs to hear. Yes, today, even in the midst of this pandemic. We're fooling ourselves if we don't think that this is some kind of tribulation. The enemy has put it upon us, and we can't move from the fact that Jesus is king. And we look to him for salvation, to rescue us from this. They live through a nightmare of great suffering, and now they wake up to a glorious fresh morning. The reason their clothes are white is not because they necessarily live lives of total holiness or purity, but because of one thing, the blood of the Lamb of God, the sacrificial Passover-like death of Jesus himself. He rescued them from slavery of sin, making them to be able to stand in the very presence of the living God himself. Now, let me make this perfectly clear. If you have sin in your life, you can't be near God's presence. Darkness cannot exist in the light. You walk into a dark room and you put on the light, what happens? The darkness goes away. Understand that. Darkness in our hearts cannot live in the presence of God. But when we ask for his forgiveness, that darkness goes away because it's filled with his light. It's not our righteousness that God sees when we believe in Jesus and we ask him to be our Lord. It's the righteousness of Christ himself through his sacrifice on the cross, through the shedding of his blood. Because of the death of Jesus and the suffering that they've already endured in the name of God, God will allow them and welcome them into his glorious presence in his heavenly temple. And then, as the Revelation reading says, he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them, just as he pitched his tent, which is also known as his tabernacle, in the midst of the Israelites during their wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. In the book of Exodus, all the blessings of being under God's tent will be theirs and ours. In ancient times, it was a part of hospitality. And i got to tell you, it's also in today's day and age that if you go and visit somebody in the Middle East and they are a Bedouin, they welcome you into their tent. They're welcoming you and making you like a member of the family. Come and eat with me. We've experienced that. It's incredible. But it's a part of the hospitality When God extends his tabernacle, his tent over you, it's a saying, you are my family. And this is the image that God is extending his tent and saying, you're not just saints, but your family. 
You're my children. I've often said that when we look in the rearview mirror of our lives, we not only see God's fingerprints over everything, but we can also see the effects of our sin, which are horrible. No one on this earth can ever escape the effects of sin. Even though people might try to deny sin and might try to cover up some of the sins and hide them or explain them away, there's no denying that sin is still sin. You've got to admit, one thing is true. All of us are born, and all of us will die someday. None of us can escape death, just as none of us can escape sin. God spoke through the prophet Ezekiel, and he said this, Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son, is mine. The soul who sins will die. Ezekiel 18.4 We can't escape death, and no one escapes sin. Believers in Jesus Christ are thankful because by God's divine forgiveness, our sins, when we repent, are washed away. They're forgiven. They're covered by the blood of the Lamb. Isn't that amazing? Just the thought of that lifts me up because no matter what I do or no matter what I say or the horrible things I might think, when I ask God to forgive me, it comes pouring out like Jesus' blood. The blackness of our tarnished heart, remember I said the darkness goes away? The blackness of our tarnished heart is covered by the blood of Jesus. i got to tell you, there is no sin that you commit that cannot be covered by the blood of Jesus when you ask for forgiveness. So that we, like the saints we read about today, who are standing before the throne of God, will one day also stand there with robes of of righteousness. And righteousness, too, when you say it that way. (laughs) Not our righteousness, but his righteousness. Salvation comes from the Lamb. The Lamb who is also our shepherd, who provides us with divine forgiveness and provides us with eternal life. Looking at Revelation and seeing the visions of John, sometimes they're almost behind, beyond human comprehension. Time and time again, we find the same people gathered there, the angels, the saints, singing out, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels are standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. The angels and the saints are there day and night worshiping Almighty God. There's nothing to worry about, nothing to fear, nothing to do except praise God. They don't get tired, so they can do it day and night, forever and ever. Talk about having a great job, huh? John tells us, never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Now, please remember, Jesus is not just the Lamb of God, but he is also the Good Shepherd. He's not just the sacrificial Lamb, but he is the one who leads us to eternal life and to springs of the water of life, living water. In closing, my brothers and sisters, on this Feast of All Saints, in spite of all the craziness of 2020, Because of the love of Jesus and what he has done for us, we do have a reason to rejoice today, to give thanks and to sing, for we as believers are the saints of God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, 
Amen. I ask you please to turn to page 127 now so that together we may profess or confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask you now to please turn to page 128, and kneeling if you're able, let us join together in the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy, for Foley, our Archbishop, and Neil, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy, for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, for our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Donald, our president. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, today we especially pray for Jake, Stone, Meg, Elizabeth, Addison, Leela, Tamara, Kim, Denny, Camden, David, Jackson, Ralph, Ashley, Joshua, Deacon Diane, Doris, Jennifer, Henry, John, Jim, Terry, Ron, Suzanne, Doug, Linda, Kevin, Jacqueline, Tim, Jackie, Rhonda, Ken, Bonita, Andrew, Denzel, Bishop Neal, and all who protect our freedoms at home and abroad. I invite you to add your own requests at this time. Lord, we continue to thank you and lift up all medical staff, first responders, and all those who are dealing with this COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for wisdom among all your people that we would proceed wisely and safely, caring for one another. We especially pray that you, Lord, will use all of this as a way to turn many to yourself, as you use all things for good. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving, let us pray. 
Lord, in your mercy. Okay. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And now turning to page 130, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and in true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Jesus said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He told Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. When the apostle Paul wrote this to Timothy, the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus, Messiah Jesus, came into the world to save sinners. And the apostle John, who wrote the book of Revelation, wrote this in his first epistle. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation, the payment for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. <laughs> Please be seated. This is that time that is formally called the offertory, but I, I think we need to be mindful of all the things that we have to be thankful for. The blessings that God has given to us and continues to give to us, uh, giving your time, your treasure, and your talents, whether it be here in church, uh, whether you mail it in, or whether you on the website. Uh, we are so very, very blessed, and we just ask that uh, you continue uh, to give to the Lord. Uh, now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
now turning to page 132 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. Our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in a multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with so many a cloud of great witnesses that we, rejoicing in their fellowship, may run with patience the race that is set before us and together with them may receive the unfading crown of glory. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and dwelt among us. He and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, so that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Now turning to page 135 of the prayer book, let us pray together the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, thou takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, thou takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, thou takest away the sins of the world, Dear saints, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I'm going to ask you now to turn to page 677 of the prayer book. Before any one of us receives Holy Communion, let us keep in mind those in the persecuted church or those who are alone today and cannot receive the physical body and blood of Jesus, now let us pray for spiritual communion with them. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people, gathered around every altar of your church, and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
And now turning to page 137 in the prayer book, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And on this All Saints Day, on the 1st of November, may the peace of God that surpasses all comprehension, all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and always. Now, mindful that you are the saints of God, please stand and let us join with all the other saints in singing hymn 362, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks.